This episode of Tweet Memo is brought to you by Audible. For a free 30-day trial and to receive a free audiobook, just head on over to audible.com slash gamebreaker. Game Breaker TV. What's up, everybody? Welcome to uh, Tweemo, episode 198, August 14th, 2014. I'm Gary Gannon, you're watching the show, and joining me as always, Mr. Troy, Noob Fridge. With my sexy face on camera once again, ladies and yes, gentlemen. it's amazing. And Mr. JKK. Hey, hey, turn my mic sideways, get closer to the mouth. There you go. Everybody's got good sounding audio this week. I think we would agree. The chat room would probably agree, and the comments, I think, will agree. Leave a comment. It sounds better. I can tell you guys sound much, much more sexy. All right, let's talk about some MMOs. Uh, big news today, of course, is the Warlords of Draenor, World of Warcraft, little bitty news event thing that went on today. So we get a release date, November 13th, 2014, is the day Warlords of Draenor is going to hit. And we got a new cinematic uh, trailer. And uh, we got a new series. So, um, I don't know. First of all, what do you guys think of the dates? Probably kind of expected around that time, the November ish. A lot of people are whining. Yeah, I, so I think that's kind of what everybody away. was kind of thinking <laughs> it was going to be. It's been so long since Siege of Orgrimmar or any significant content was released. So, But I think November is what everybody kind of figured. Holiday season, buy some stuff for Christmas, make some money. And everything's yeah, out of the way. people happy. All, I mean, all the big stuff, all, all the other games are out of the way. Well, I mean, you know, they all the big MMO releases now. We don't really have anything competing come November, December, right? Uh, MMO wise, nothing I'm aware of. Rifts the got crew. an expansion coming out later this yeah. this year, but it's not going to really compete with that. The crew comes out in November. That's Maybe. true. <laughs> Car PG. Car PG. Like the you. expansion comes out in December. The expansion. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. It's funny. <laughs> um, cinematics amazing. Blizzard never can do wrong with these things. I mean, they just they're so good, and they do all these in house. Most of these other companies spend tons of money, and they outsource them to like big Hollywood production studios and Blizzard does these these uh all these cinematics in the house they got their own team and nobody great. does a gaming cinematic like Blizzard does. If they ever decide they don't want to do games anymore, they could just make a living doing cinematics. So I think what's great about the cinematic is it really gives you that in between story stuff. And I and someone who hasn't gotten a max level on WoW, mm -hmm. the story just seeing the cinematics, seeing these little story bits that they keep putting out is just sort of like Ooh, that could intrigue me to try to play. And somebody who's never played the game, I think these things can really intrigue them to try it out. Come up. This Who has expansion. not played World of Warcraft? <laughs> that would be the. Who on this planet has not played console it? players? Yes, yeah, possibly. <laughs> I don't know. You think you you guys you guys see this pulling in a lot of new players, or is this really? I think pull back definitely old players. Yeah, I think it's definitely going to pull back a lot of old players. I don't know. I mean, how many new players do they pull in nowadays? It seems like they're just sort of playing with the people they've got who kind of know about the lore. Like like this trailer here, this is a big lore moment. I mean, the original version of this where um, Grom actually drinks the, the blood of Manoroth here is what causes the Horde to turn green and become all evil and invade Azeroth. So, you know, this I mean, this is a big lore moment that's getting changed right here where he doesn't and they turn against the... You know, the the enemies, I forget what they're called, the Fell Legion or whatever. So, I mean, they, they've got a lot going on here, but this is stories that the, the existing players are familiar with, and it's interesting to see a new twist on it kind of going forward with it. Do you think it's they're like being effective, the story though? Can, do you think they're being effective communicating it to people who don't know the story, though? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm very, I was very into the lore back when I played. I read all the books that were out and everything Christy Golden and then everybody else did. So, I mean, I, I'm pretty familiar with the story. I'm not sure as far as World of Warcraft players, especially Wrath babies, they may not be as familiar with this story. Because I think a lot of this kind of got told during sort of the Burning Legion expansion is when all these stories started kind of coming out. So, so maybe there aren't as many WoW players as you might think that are familiar with this. But uh, if they're not, this is a nice setup to kind of let them know what's going on, at least in the expansion going forward. And I'm sure at some point they're going to pick up on, hey, you know, this is a part of the history of what we already know that's being changed right here. 
Do you guys think? That, do you think World of Warcraft in its in its elder years, like you know, Wrath and Honest, like actually started becoming more lore heavy and making it much more of like an important aspect of it? Because I mean, I played like you know vanilla since like day one and stuff, and then I kind of dropped off after a while. But I feel like early on, like they didn't really push it. It didn't really matter. Most players didn't know the lore. Most players didn't know the stories. There wasn't, uh, you know, it seems like the older it gets, the more they kind of hone in and push that as like a big sort of, I don't say selling point, but kind of a selling point. I, I think it, maybe it helped it become sort of the monster it is too, because as they got bigger, they started, you know, more people became more interested in the overall lore of what was going on. So they started putting that out and the more they put out, the bigger it got and the more people wanted. So it's probably got a lot to do with why WoW is what it is because there is so much lore for an MMO. I mean, it's probably got as much or more lore than just about any MMO out there. I think it's a result of them just having those large number of fans early on, and they're like, and when you've got somebody, when they get invested in a game, they start wanting to know more about its story, whether they realize they're not. So the people who do, I mean, they got them the books, they got them to start giving them the story, so then they become even stronger invested, and now they become almost like you're, they're out there voicing for that game everywhere. Just they'll be talking to somebody like, "Yeah, badass story going here." And like the orcs, they drink this crap and it makes them kill people. So now, now it's just like I think the story just kind of drew those people in to make them become like bigger fans than they already were, um, and that was part of the reason for it. Yeah, absolutely. Back when I played, when I started getting into the books, uh, it just brought me further into the game, and I would see little things that I didn't notice before, or characters that I didn't realize were as big a part of the game as I thought they were, and it just it drug me in that much further. So it, it's you guys addictive. keep talking about books. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna talk about Audible <laughs> now because you guys keep talking about books, and if everybody is psyched about it. Let's talk about Audible right now. Audible.com slash GameBreaker. Sign up, get a free 30-day trial and a free audio book. And guess what? They got a ton of the World of Warcraft books. What do you, what do you guys, which one do you recommend on here players may start with if they're new? Because uh, War Crimes is the, is the newest. Yeah, War Crimes was the latest one. It's, it's really good. I actually listened to it Am I right in saying Audible. Storm Rage is a pretty good one to start with? Mm -hmm. there, there's also, I'm not sure if it's on Audible or not in the same format it was in the book. There was one that had three or four different actual store lore, like big important lore stories kind of in like one compendium. And I haven't actually looked through Audible to see if that's on there. But I mean, well, there's a pretty bunch much of them anything you, you got... pick up is well written. Christy Golden's my favorite, but Richard Knack and some of the other guys do great work on these World of Warcraft lore books. They're all good and they all have, they're all tied into the actual lore of what's happening in the World of Warcraft game. So, I mean, you can't go wrong with any of them. Well, you guys are getting excited for the uh, Warlords of Draenor. Go check it out. So I'm hook you up with a free book and a free trial so you can choose one of the World of Warcraft books and start learning more about the lore. So just use audible.com slash gamebreaker. Um, now, the other thing, this is another thing. You've seen Blizzard in the past few months really start getting more and more into, like, different media. You know, they did the reality show, the Azeroth Choppers, and all that kind of stuff. And now they revealed this new uh, Lords of War series. What's What's this all about? Where is this going? I like what this is, an animated sort of look back at some of the lore of what's going on with the game. This is this is going to, over time, give you more and more about what's going on. I think they've said that it's not going to cover every warlord that's going to be, you know, sort of roaming about in Warlords of Draenor, but they're going to cover a lot of the key figures and really set you up with what's going on, who's, who's the important people, why are things happening the way they are with this series. So if you don't want to take the time to read a book, these are going to come out. I think they said there's, what, going to be four of these that are come out eventually, and they're going to let you know what's happening and who's important and why you're out back, you know, out in Draenor uh, fighting what you're doing. How important you guys think is this? I mean, this, this seems like they're really going for broke here, just like, you know, really just mixed media. They film, you know, shorts, I mean, cinematics. They did it with the... They did it with the previous thing that led people up to the story and let them know what was going on, and the f people seem to love it. And I guess it's kind of, if anything right now, this is their in-between. We don't have any more content for the next several months, so wait each week for a new cinematic video. Yeah, you've gone nine months without any significant new content in the game, so here, so have some lore trailers to get you ready. Hey, I'll, expansion we want you I'll to take spend it. Money on. Who won't take it? Who won't take I'll it? Everybody's got to wait until November. I, I mean, I think everybody will take today. it. It's yeah, really interesting how they're stylized. It. They're doing this too with kind of like this mixed media and stuff. It's pretty cool. Yeah. 
Uh, last up, kind of whoop, not that, but got a little overshadowed. But uh, the the trout the troll uh, models, got to look at those. When did this pop? This popped yesterday, right? This was this is like a day uh, I believe so. I believe that's when all all that kind of really came out. I think we've sort of seen bits and pieces of the new trolls on on the alpha server, but this is the this is the big official reveal. I like the fact that like some of the models they've done kind of like a complete revamp to make them look a lot a lot better and a lot different than what they were. Like humans are quite a bit different than what they originally were. With trolls, it looks more just kind of like an HD version of what was already there, which is fine with me because Trolls was already the best race in the game mod. <laughs> Troll Master Race? Troll Master Race. Might be crazy. I feel like the females look actually a little meaner, which is kind of cool. They look a little bit more, a lot more muscles going on. Yeah, th those are definitely some females who are going to put a hurting on you. Yeah. Seems a little less troll-like than the other trolls, than the males, though. So today's definitely been uh, Blizzard Day, a game breaker and everywhere else. So check it all out. So November 13th is the date. Uh, got that going. People have already been streaming it. A lot of people, I think, have seen WAD in action at this point. Streams are going and yeah, at, least, at least what you're able to see and check out. So um, sure we bring a lot of people back for that holiday season. So. All right, next up, let's talk about uh, we got Gamescom going on over in Germany, over in Cologne. There's a lot of new news coming out over there. Uh, BioWare announces uh, Shadow Realms. Um, You've been chosen. Yeah, this this new game mode seems like the flavor of the year. This is like the thing to do right now is make games that are like 4v1, four players and one monster. Like uh, you This know, is going to be your gaming fad for a little while. It looks like we're going to start getting more and more of these kind of 4v1s or at least some sort of group versus one player doing different things. You know, I've always been for it, though. I always thought it would be awesome to play an MMORPG where they're doing their rating and stuff, and, like, they actually have somebody who's paid, people who are paid in there to play the boss of a raid. Yep. So when I <laughs> go into a 40-man raid and the last person's actually an employee playing the boss and attacking you, I mean... That's a lot and, of and essentially, that's, that's kind of what they're going for with this one. This one's a little different than Evolve, where in the, the the one player who's the bad guy is actually controlling the Shadow Lord, who is the boss, but also controlling all the minions and everything that's happening in the dungeon. So it, it's it's kind of like sitting down at a, at a table and playing a little D and D, where you got the group of heroes and then you've got like a dungeon master kind of making things happen. I think that's, really, that's kind of the idea they're wanting to go to. I mean, you're controlling creatures, you're setting traps, and you're changing the environment itself, but you're all still playing it from a third-person over-the-shoulder perspective. There is no um, – you don't see it from a bird's-eye perspective or anything, so you're still having to travel around and find and see the players and what they're doing, and you might change stuff as go, or you might possess a monster and take control of it. So there, there are a there. lot of tabletop games that dungeon crawlers that function like this. So it's really going to be fun to see more games try this in a dungeon crawler video game because so how it do we works know, how really does well it, and it's awesome how, in the tabletop. How is the dungeon crawl going to sort of work? I mean, is it's because apparently it's going to be very story driven. So is it like going through different dungeons and stories and actually things unfolding, or is it more like you know sort of map based where you're going to be doing, you know, things over and over with lobby based people just you know kind of filtering in. I actually think it is kind of lobby based from the way they made it sound like because it's like you can solo you can go in there solo queue and you'll just get matched up with four with four other people or you'll get a group of people and you can go play together like that. Um, so it definitely sounds like a lobby based system. I think it would be better if you have like a general hub area that you can actually stand around and just talk and play with people and maybe group up and go. But it definitely sounds like literally choose your mission and go play it. And there's probably a progression order that you have to follow the first time through, maybe. Do you guys consider these like MMOs? Is this the way it's going? These like smaller, like, is this really considered an MMO now? 4v1, but just, you know, because it's on a massive server, I guess, with a lobby. I mean, why is this any different than like, you know, Call of Duty? Uh, I, I don't think this would be considered an MMO probably by most people. If you want to go by the, just say the words, what MMO stands for, you know, massively multiplayer online, then, then yeah, I guess it follows under those. But what most people consider an MMO, the, the at least somewhat open world and, and the quests and stuff like that, this isn't really going to fall into that category. Um, I don't know. The, the, this one's a little different than even Evolve. Evolve comes across almost more towards the MOBA end, where this one seems like, you know, the dungeon crawling aspect of it, it seems a little more MMO-ish uh, than be, Evolve is. It may be more like the Guild Wars 1 story design. 
you went in, you took your group of people, you got your group of four, you went onto that map, and nobody else, have, nobody else bothered you in there as you completed that story part. It was literally a story every single time. Every single map you went into, there was something you were doing, you were completing in there, and then you went on to the next one, and it continued like that. So it sounds very much similar to that idea that Guild Wars 1 went with, and I actually prefer that over MMO theme park kill mobs WoW quest. Yeah, there were definitely upsides to the original Guild Wars the way they did things. Because, I mean, they're saying also not only there's going to be the, the, the co-op multiplayer, you know, or, or co-op missions, that's the dungeon crawler stuff, there's going to be actually some solo stuff in here as well tied to some story. So, What is Bioware? And so, like, like that's the biggest thing. Uh, Bioware, we all always story. know. And, yeah, all about story and all about the decisions you make affecting your story. And we saw in SWOTOR where they had, did that, and but they had everybody, oh, roll to die, and whoever's option it was, it chose, or whatever, which kind of got annoying to people, and I think they've kind of realized that here, and the major choices that you make take place in a solo type experience for those major choices is what it sounds like they're doing in order to eliminate that, oh, I had to go with whatever he chose because that's what the die said type of deal. And the Maybe amount not. of people who were upset that this was not announced as a solo RPG there was a lot of <laughs> hurt on the internet. <laughs> you can't play offline, people, and there is no solo play. So maybe not an MMO in the most traditional sense, but you know the classes, they're going warrior, assassin, wizard, cleric, warlock, and, of course, the uh, shadow lord. So they're definitely good. I think a lot of MMO players probably would put this in there on their, on their desktop and probably play it in between whatever they're playing. It seems like it definitely excuse me, goes after that sort of crowd. Um, next up, which... Uh, the debate is still out of whether you want to call it an MMO or not. I'm calling it an MMO. Destiny. This Destiny's one. already, apparently, like I it hasn't even been launched. And uh, they announced their expansion, which they stole from Blizzard, called The, the Dark, Dark Blood. Blood. Oh, stolen. <laughs> I saw this and I thought, someone's kidding, right? This is fake. Almost like a troll. <laughs> yeah. Expansion? This expansion. I was like, like now, game hasn't launched yet. We got an expansion announced. Well, it's December though, right? Like they're gonna they're gonna launch the expansion in December, which is the game's only gonna be out for two months. Yeah, and they've already got yeah, an three. expansion. Yeah. So three months, it would make three. sense that you'd have to announce this early to let people know. <laughs> let them know that you're, you're, they didn't even say if it's gonna cost, did they? They just said we're gonna have an expansion. It's probably gonna cost money too. Got an expansion. They announced this another expansion too with no date. They announced another one. You think they're Isn't just, you think just, just DLC though? Is this just, is this a rebranding of DLC? In that order was going to be my question. Nice? What is going to differentiate this? Because Destiny is an MMO, not really yeah. an MMO, <laughs> but we're going to call it one because Gary. We're an MMO, it. so now we have expansions. So this is just like DLC that's getting announced before the game even launches. Man, people get upset about day one DLC and what they perceive yes, as they do. content this that should was be done the before the game launches. Should it should already game. be in the game. This is day negative 30. <laughs> <laughs> day negative 30 DLC. They, they, they not only announced this one. That, so this one comes out in December. Well, there's a new trailer for This is a Gamescom trailer. I guess they just launched. I'm super excited for Destiny. I had a lot of fun in the beta. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know. what differenti What's the differentiator between DLC and an expansion? What, 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 what What's the line? I don't know, but from the amount it sounds like, I think we might as well call Wildstar's monthly content expansions now if we're going to go this route. Every but month an expansion. Of it. Yeah, everything's an expansion now. <laughs> Twelve expansions a year. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, DLC, I guess, is usually kind of smaller, so it might be a little bit bigger than DLC, I guess, and, and they just want it with the expansion term because it sounds nicer. You th what if you got if you had to make a choice uh, a total guess would you do you think they're going to charge for it? Yes. I think they're they're going to charge for it, but I'm not sure if I'm I'm worried if they'll charge full price or not. Full price the meaning like a, like a, like 50 50 60 dollars? <laughs> no. Like come on. No, yeah, that, that can't be that. <laughs> 2 <big>. months <laughs> after you just bought the game? <laughs> GG no, Destiny be... you're doing. <laughs> no, no, everybody's going to be pissed. You're going to be there's no, they, no, no monthly have, fee though, right? So. No, there's no have they announced any sort of season pass or like buy, you know, pay and get all the DLC or all the expansions like for one cost? Have they announced that yet? Cuz that that seems like that's coming. Cuz they announced another expansion pack, House of Wolves. Which yeah, has if you're no announcing date. your DLC before your game even launches, you've got some sort of season pass coming, surely. 
<laughs> they've got two expansions announced. We haven't even we haven't launched the game or the second expansion or the first expansion, but we have a second one ready for you as well. I wouldn't. I see you're, you're being snarky towards the Destiny people. I blame gamers because these motherfuckers finish all the content so fast. These guys are like, oh my god, what do I do? What do we do? They're gonna finish the content in like 48 hours. So we basically got to tell them now that there's something to look forward to. <laughs> day two, no. somebody will be on Twitter complaining. Day two, somebody will, will, will be done. Yeah, day two, somebody <laughs> will be done with Destiny. Back and beat it, so beat is Destiny. This, is this a resort? Does it, GG. People just say like, when they com- they're going to complete it in the first day, the first twenty four hours, they sit there and play, it, and they're just going to be like, well, at least the expansion will be here in three months. Well, here we're we're, we're, we're laughing at it because it's called an expansion, right? But you made a really good point. Look at MMOs' uh, new uh, cadence of of content release monthly, like WildStar monthly releases of content to keep players engaged because people rip through this stuff so fast. So why would Destiny really be any different? Why should they not have stuff almost, you know, this maybe, maybe most cool. other games don't call those expansions though. Yeah. <laughs> most of them those call it just <laughs> That is the odd thing or that they're going world or whatever. And that they don't the charge thing. for most of those monthly updates like that either. I, I think it's just mostly funny they call it an expansion. Honestly, they they're releasing content they already have announced but planned for 3 months after launch is probably actually definitely a good thing especially for anybody who's wanting to play an MMO shooter they're probably going to put in a lot of time early on into Destiny and they're going to be looking for something um, really quick additionally to play with it so it's a good thing I just think the calling it expansion is just extremely hilarious to anybody who has played MMO RPGs themselves and yeah that just, might be a little odd much. term Taz, and maybe they've uh, been Tazi watching B. The Sims 4 and decided that they want to follow that uh, sort of pay model that's but they are console, so maybe it's everything out of the game, and they just pay for everything later. Tuzzy B in the console. chat room said, um, "There is a season pass, and it's cl- included in the collector's edition of Destiny, okay. or or the Ghost Literally. edition. So maybe I need to upgrade my package then, because I think I only bought the standard. Maybe I need to look at the Ghost." Yep, time for an upgrade. Time for an upgrade. Um, the other thing people which that that, about, that alone tells you that they will be charging for these since since that yeah. does exist. These will be that you will pay for these. If I you think that's expected. That I don't think anybody expects to get this yeah. stuff for free. Uh, so. We just got done. I mean, we didn't even know, and we just got done saying, yeah, these are going to be paid expansions. So it does say includes the Destiny expansion pass for the good. There you go. Edition. How much is the Ghost Edition? Uh, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Damn, Game Breaker better get a deal on it. this. I need a deal. I don't want to pay full price. <laughs> I'm going to buy the Ghost Edition now. I wonder if I can still... I could probably upgrade it on Amazon, right? Probably. I hope oh, so. I'm sure. It's on Amazon. That's where I pre-ordered my standard edition. Just sign up to be notified when this item becomes available. Oh, it's not even available, so there's no price? Interesting. That's a fi- Oh, that's a physical. I don't know. I wonder if there's a... There's not a digital um, DZ in the chat room is telling me $150, but you can't yeah, okay. buy the, the Ghost Edition anymore. Oh, man. The, street price is, the expansion street price pass is, is 35 Oh, okay. So the street price on, I guess, Ghost is sold out, and the the, the street price is going for about 300 bucks. People are reselling them. So we oh, missed out. Wow. They're gone. That's... Okay, so 35 What would you say, 35 for the expansion pack? $35 for the expansion pass. And that's probably, what, a year? Does it say, or is it just... The life of destiny or like that this 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 a lot of times now they, they'll they'll say like how many dlcs comes with it instead of like a time period so i would imagine it's got to be for this title until the next yeah, it's one not hits. Showing, it's not because that's not because that's not bad and if they've already announced two so let's i don't know guess say, and say if, that if every three months you're going to get something so that means you're probably going to get like three to four maybe yeah. so you think so you think this expansion pass will just be for destiny and then destiny 2 We'll have a different expansion pass. pass. Yeah, for sure. For sure. We're not going to pay $35, and I think it's good for the next, like, seven, you know, years. What did they say? Seven seven games? Eleven games? What did they say? I think it was seven. A 10-year contract. Yeah. No, that's going to be just for that one title, which still, that's not really that bad of a deal. 35 bucks, and you pay me get three, four, five pack DLC packs, expansions, whatever you call them. I'll I'll pay that. Um, The other big news, $500 million is apparently what they spent on Destiny, the entire franchise. And this really confused people. Um, they, they came out with the $500 million thing and it was misquoted, I believe is how it was. And people are like, it cost $500 million to, to create Destiny? And no, it didn't. They put down $500 and like assets ahead of time saying, here's how much we are going to be allocating for Destiny, Destiny. the series, for all 10 years. So for all 
of Destiny. Oh, really? Five hundred really, million dollars is what. Oh, doing. okay. Then I didn't even. I I thought maybe that was going to include like the marketing budget, which I got to imagine is probably. I bet you they're spending two hundred million in marketing just for this first title. Yeah, I, I bet the marketing budget is pretty good size for this because they 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 want this to be as big as everybody seems to think that it's going to be. The people know if they want it to be as big as huge. Call of Duty. They need yeah, to probably Halo. spend their own. They, they need to be as they, big as Halo. <laughs> yeah, then they probably need to spend in that two hundred and fifty million dollar mark because that's what those games actually spent. Somewhere around the two hundred fifty million is what I've heard. I guess that the, maybe that doesn't include that can include it. That so it's five hundred million dollars set for the entire franchise of the development of Destiny. Oh, for all the that's, you know, I can't wait yeah, for this. Uh, though. I cannot wait for Destiny. Uh, all right, up next. This was a sad story, man. Talk about hitting everybody. Who didn't love Robin Williams? Seriously. He's like a childhood friend. At some point in your life, you have been entertained by Robin Williams. Oh, my God. It's like You ridiculous. can't sit there and tell me you have not. Everybody here watching this and listening to this, at some point in your life, this man has made you laugh or cry or feel something. Such a it sad was story. It I, mean, I, I remember <laughs> growing up watching Mork and Mindy and shit. And it was like the funniest thing ever. Just so 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 sad. Uh, now they're talking about that uh, today. I think the news came out that uh, his wife is saying he had the uh, onset of Parkinson's disease and hadn't made it public yet, but had just found out. So maybe no, that I hadn't, heard, I hadn't even heard that yet. Jeez. That uh, yeah, that just came out today. So, but um, he was a huge gamer. I don't know if a lot of people know that, but that's why I bring it up. He's actually. I mean, I, I really. I mean, first of all, his daughter was his name. Her name is Zelda. Which, there you go, right in there. You mm-hmm. named yep. your child after a video game character. But he was, he's huge. I mean, he's a huge WoW player, played a ton of World of Warcraft. So, after, as soon as he passed away and the news hit the internet, I know um, the World of Warcraft peeps immediately fired up a petition to try and uh, get him uh, a memorial or something in World of Warcraft. And they got, I don't know what, I don't know if you guys saw, I don't even know what the number was, but so many people signed up on that petition. Yeah, I forget. Um, I wrote the article. It was like it was over a hundred thousand signatures or something. I forget exactly what like the number was, but it was like it was, yeah, it was like within twenty four hours there were yeah. like a hundred thousand people on this thing. So Blizzard instantly just said yes, of course we will do that. So they're putting uh, they're putting uh, him in the game in some way. Have they said if it's gonna be like an NPC or like they don't have they haven't really said yet? They didn't say exactly. Just said we'll see you in game. Yeah, so they're gonna do. Well, I think that was, and the speculation, the petition was wanting more of an NPC. So I think between them saying we'll see you in game and kind of what people were hoping for and kind of what they still are hoping for, I think it's kind of just lending everybody to say it's probably going to be an NPC, which if everybody's thinking it should be and will be an NPC, Blizzard will probably make sure it is some form of NPC. So, I mean, he was a huge gamer, though. I mean, I remember watching interviews with him talking about, like, some people would bring it up, and every once in a while they would talk about it, and, like, I know he loved like Call of Duty and F- FPS games and Counter Strike and all those games. So he's a huge gamer. <laughs> he, there's a little um, segment with him and um, Jimmy Fallon talking about it and stuff. And he talks about how he, he'd be sitting there playing um, an FPS game at night and a little ten year old start just start <laughs> talking <laughs> shit at him. I killed you, old man. You shit. <laughs> and he started making fun of him. Just it was hilarious. Though. I've been reading good. stories the past few days about how and wow he lo- he was like a uh, trade chat troll. He loved just getting in trade chat and just trolling people. Oh like, really? Saying crazy stuff. Yeah, I was re- I forget where I was reading these stories, but there was two or three different stories I was reading about him trolling trade chat and stuff like that and, and rolling anonymous characters so he could troll people in chat and stuff. And I was like, man, that kind of sounds like Gary Gannon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well. He will definitely be missed and hit a lot of people really hard. A lot of people just, you know, grew up with him. It's like he's weird. Like certain people in the media and stuff like feel like a friend sort of. And you just think you, yeah. you start thinking about all the amazing films that he's been in and the stand ups that, you know, you watch throughout the years. And I was going to say, I wrote this in the article. If you're one of the younger people who know him more as a TV and film star, mm. do yourself a favor and look up his stand up. His stand up yeah. is phenomenal. Just so fast, like just so ahead of everyone else he was around, like doing stand up. He was thinking like 10 steps ahead of everybody. Just, yeah, it was comedy. just a constant. It's just his comedy stuff was like it's just a stream of consciousness. Consciousness. You just, but it all it made like sense. Whatever, it just, all, just randomly it, come up with stuff and say. But it all made sense. Like he tied it yes. all in. It was crazy. You know. All right. Uh, next up, uh, Minecraft. So there was this Minecraft convention called Minorama. It's a terrible name. Guys should have known better. But Minorama, <laughs> the Minecraft convention, basically, yeah, um, basically disappeared. So 
they they had put up, I guess, you know, on a website and stuff and created a thing, started collecting uh, money for tickets, $150 a ticket. Apparently, there was about 3,600 tickets sold. So that's, uh, if you do the math, it's about $540,000, somewhere in the range. So, oh, you know, half a mil. And um, all of a sudden, they were gone. Poof. Gone. Never happened. Well, well, the convention was set I mean, for July 11th, and then it just never happened. Well, yeah, and right. they canceled it just a few days before the event too. It was like the week of the event. They're like, oh, yeah. oh, this is. Oh, happening. by the way, it's not happening. But yeah, where was it supposed to happen? On Twitter, please no. Well, July 7th, they sent out a Twitter message that said, "Please no, we are not a scam." July, July, so July 7th was <laughs> this the 11th was the day it was supposed to happen. The 7th, their tweet is, "Please we note, are we are not." Scam. When anyone says, "Please note, we are not a scam," you can pretty much guarantee <laughs> it's a yeah, scam. scam. It is not going to go your way. Nope. <laughs> You're screwed at that point. Yeah. So they didn't Did have they, it, and then now the website in the website in Twitter disappeared um, a little bit after the convention was canceled. I'm not sure it was that day. I think it was recently. Yeah, they actually spent some time responding to like people board. on Facebook and stuff before they actually just disappeared, which is odd. I mean, if you're going to just disappear with people's money, why did you spend three days trying to justify it and then like then flip the switch off? Just well, they trolling. needed to save up time to get out of the country. Yeah, that's probably <laughs> it. <laughs> Funds were being deposited in the Cayman Islands or something. So You know, th- this may very well be a scam, but in a way, if you look at the timeline and sort of the things, that, it almost comes across as if these were some folks who had good intentions but just got in way over their head and panicked and as the saying goes, you know, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Ah, I'm not buying that. Why, why are you thinking that? They just got buried in and didn't what, what, know what, what to do with it. What clues you into that? What gives you that idea? I'm not I'm not saying that's what it is. I still think it's a scam. But some of the indicators, I mean, it just it looks like with them trying to defend it and, and they took in the money and then they start talking about vendors canceling and not getting funding and stuff like that. It almost seems like, like the day they started selling tickets like a year prior or whatever, they were like, yeah, we're going to get all this money and run this big Minecraft convention. And as the year kind of went on, they were like, oh, shit, what are we going to do? This is nowhere yeah, but when you have, enough. But, but, but when you have half a million dollars, I mean, they've got some funds to put something together. I mean, Jesse Cox is having a goddamn convention. If Cox can put together a convention, <laughs> these guys can put it together a convention for half a million dollars. I'm not you have to it. have better planning skills than Jesse freaking Cox. Come exactly. On. He's a mess. He's, he's putting together a conference. He ain't getting no half a million dollars. Check it out. Uh, CoxCon. Really? Is that what he called it? Yeah, CoxCon. Okay. Yep. He did it. I think he did it. So I think he did it slightly as a joke to just see like what it would happen if he put it up there and see who would like sign up for it. And he was like blown away. Like I think over and, a thousand and, people. I think over a thousand say, now, people. Now they're worried they're not going to be able to get everybody in in yeah. the uh, the place that they chose. Well, he didn't. He didn't think that it would be a thing. He was <laughs> like, people keep saying do this, and all right, I'll do it. I see if you guys respond. And a thousand people bought tickets, and he's like, holy shit, you guys are really going to come. Potato salad thing. convention as well. Hey, I can't wait. That. Cox potato salad convention in Ohio. I'm definitely going to CoxCon. Uh, Star Wars The Old Republic, which, by the way, for anybody who is a fan of The Republic, the show, there will be one final episode, I believe. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. Uh, a shed a tear show. Well, actually, for so everybody out there, everybody's like, where are all the shows going? Um, some of the shows are going away. We're doing some revamping and stuff. So right now, yes, right now we are down to this show. This is it, boys. Tweemo. This is the show. Everything the else last is canceled. Hold out for Game Breaker. UDSP is canceled. <laughs> I hate using the word canceled, but it sounds so negative. UDSP is canceled. Yeah. That, that canceled. makes it sound like something went bad. It's just no, another know, one bad. Re- reevaluate, it's, time, re-evaluate. it's time to reevaluate, revamp, and recharge. So um It's going into the vault. Yeah, Tweemo are leaving. We're gonna <laughs> keep going. Vault. We're gonna keep Tweemo up. And um I definitely think we'll be bringing back one more show that I'm sort of trying to work on. But oh no, we, you know, we still have Waypoint, League of Legends show, and some of the showcase revival. Those won't go away. Those are staying. Expect maybe some more shows like that as well. I don't even know if a lot of our hardcore fans know that that show. I think you guys know it exists. Waypoint, some of the showcase. It's our shows. Go watch them. Really? If you're a League of Le- if you're a League of Legends fan, you should watch them. It goes, um, it goes on the site every week. Yep. So we might do you more shows be like watching. that. And we'll we'll be bringing back more shows, but just gonna switch things up. We've been doing those shows. I mean, we did. What are we got? 198 of this. We did like 180 something episodes of the Republic. Anyway, so uh, we'll start talking about Star Wars a little bit more on this show and stuff comes up. So Galactic Strongholds expansion. We talked a little bit about this on their pubs, but uh, customize your stronghold, conquer planets with 
guild flagships. Um, and then early access, we found that uh, opens up on August 19th. Um, and this is something I think a lot, a lot of people maybe not watching this show. We, we were clued into a little bit a couple weeks ago with a with a, the top MMO list that came out a few weeks ago. But over a million active players, apparently, in Star Wars The Republic. You guys been and jumping back in? You guys are both players. You guys were on and off, right? Yeah, I played for a while when it first launched. And then I went back when it went free to play because I wanted to play through the rest of the, some Story. of the stories that I wanted to see. Yeah. But since then, I mean, not really. Yeah, I so. mean, it's cool for what it is. I kind of wish Larry was here because I, I heard him talking earlier in the week about these guild flagships and the freaking sheer size of these things and how just awesome they are. And yeah, this was gigantic. to share with us the impressiveness of these humongous guild flagships. Yep, they're gigantic. I'm watching Chatham. No, just, just, just to interject some before I forget this, because Chatham's worried about Convert to Raid is not going away. So Convert to Raid is still a Game Breaker show. Oh, Game yeah, Breaker. Yeah, yeah. Keep going. So we have a World of Warcraft <laughs> show. That's not going away. Good. Sorry. But the, the it says conquer planets with these guild flagships, and I I I wish Larry was here to explain that because I'm not sure how that's done. Like, you actually taking your is this like a PVP thing, or is this just like a another story PVE side thing that you just go and fight a planet as a guild? I don't believe uh, it is completely known just yet. If I think back to my last episode of the Republic, we discussed that. I think I brought that exact question up, and everyone is slightly wondering the exact same thing. I don't think we exactly mm. know, but we'll, like I guess I think we're gonna have one more last episode. We're trying to coordinate when to do it because I kind of feel like it's right to say goodbye. But uh, so we'll talk about that. I'll bring that up on the show. We'll well, it sounds out. like after August nineteenth, somebody will probably know the answer to the question. <laughs> this is true, and that's right around the corner. So, all right, last up this week, I'm actually excited about. This. Are you guys excited about uh, the crew? I am really excited about it. Now, I don't Are know, you really? What, wow, I can tell in your voice. Like, I used to be I used to play card games all the time as a kid, especially on Same console. Here. And like and I used I really enjoyed them and stuff and I played them and I kind of stopped over the years and I don't know what made me stop and they were just all kind of the same thing, I guess, and there wasn't anything innovative or interesting about it. But you it fell into the MMO seems... hall of nerd yeah. of playing with other people. That's what happened. <laughs> yeah, so like this brings out the idea like you're going across the entire world, getting to play with people, race against them, and now even this is showing like you're you're getting to knock them off the track or run them off into the mountain and cause them to crash and stuff. I mean, I got my PvP racing MMO across the United States experience all in one thing. I mean, it's just, and customization is just off the rack. We've talked about that, I think, every single week, but the customization is just crazy. I mean, it's going to be interesting. I'm going to play this one. I, I, I remember playing this like, uh, I think, two years or a year or so ago. Not the last E3, but the E3 before it. And I was not impressed at all. They needed to go back and do some work, and they they went back and spent a whole nother year working on it. And the more and more I see it, the more I'm actually, I'm definitely going to try this one. Troy, are you interested in the crew? Oh, yeah. I'm definitely going to be playing this, uh, pre-ordering this very, very soon. Guess what? Ooh, save some money. Actually, yeah, pretty stupid. Don't pay full price for games anymore, peeps. Make sure you check the GameBreaker.com or GameBreaker.tv slash deals page. But, uh, to make it easy, if you guys are going to pre-order the crew, gboffer.com slash the crew, just go there and you, you'll get 20% off, which is like a good amount of money. We're not talking like, you know, 50 cents here. 20% off your pre-order just by using that URL. So if you're going to pre-order it, that's that's the way to do it. Lock it in and get it. Um, yeah, I'm definitely going to I'm definitely gonna check it out. I got I got some hopes for the, uh, I got some hopes for that game. It's going to be interesting. I'm kind of, I think I'm the same exact way as you. Like I used to love card games racing games as a kid and I kind of fell out. I don't really play them anymore, but I think the social aspect of getting online with people and racing and doing some shenanigans might be actually kind of interesting and fun. If you just want to get in your car and drive across the country, you can do that too. So, I mean, there's a, there's a lot to do there. There's a lot of interesting things going on. So, And I think uh, there's a lot of things they can expand upon too. I mean, if they're making mm -hmm. this a matter they can go even bigger, like maybe even come in with features of your guild or clan or whatever they want to call it in there, your crew, I guess, maybe you can start dominating a city and like become the best in that city, always racing in it mm, and stuff. Maybe. And people can try to t go against you to take over and be the b best in that city. I mean, they can, they can start doing some cool stuff with just like that control of the areas through racing. I think uh, last of this week, just to mention, I just want to, what do you guys think of the DayZ hitting the PlayStation 4 announcement? Uh, a little surprised that we're getting an announcement that they're going to the PlayStation 4 when the, the sort of the PC version has sort of been in development limbo for a while now. But uh, they, they say it's going to improve the PC experience. So 
I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I'll I, that I, when I see it. I don't know what it's going to do for the PC experience, but on, on some level, I think it's kind of smart for them. In this sense, uh, one of the things I think that plagues DayZ is their compatibility with so many different PCs being able to handle the game and enjoy it and rendering all those, z- rendering the zombies and everything in it. At least with the PlayStation 4, they know here's our hardware, here's exactly what our limitations are, let's build around that now and, just, and start putting stuff in. So they're not wor- they don't have to worry about anything about what other people have on the PlayStation 4 regarding hardware and stuff and if they can handle it. And they can just build for it. You guys, Arma, you guys, Arma Three fans, you play Arma Three at all? No, I never did. I I'm not, not a big military shooter, dude. Well, I'll tell you the new hotness. If anybody wants to, and you guys check it out. But the uh, the Altus Life RPG mod thing for this, we got to check out the Altus Life mod for Arma Three. I'm telling you, it's genius. It's Arma Three, the game that spawned a million mods that could potentially go into solo games. It's great. I love. It's actually. It's actually really cool. So it's like when you log into the server that has this this uh, mod running, you have to choose between like you know, different factions, basically, just like a pedestrian, a cop, or I guess like bandits. And then basically the server only has so many of each. And then basically you have jobs to do, and you go down and you hunt people and kill people and do all kinds of stupid things. It's, it's kind of hilarious. Watch on Twitch. People are always streaming on Twitch. It's definitely a new hotness. Is that one right there? All right, Troy Blackburn. Follow him on the Twitter. Noob Fridge is where you can follow him on the Twitters. Noob Fridge. Justin Kennedy at JKK Kennedy TV. Follow him on the Twitter as well. And of course, right here on Twitter, which is not going away. We're, we'll still be here. We'll be here next week. So if I can get everything working right. All right. Follow me, at Gary Gannon, and uh, follow Game Breaker TV, Game Breaker TV, and uh, sign up for GBM, Game Breaker Media. If you guys are live streamers or YouTubers, if you make uh, YouTube videos or live stream content, you have a channel. Doesn't matter how big or small you are, make sure you go check out GameBreakerMedia.com. We have advertisers and monetization waiting for you. All you got to do is sign up. Check it out, GameBreakerMedia.com. All right. We'll see you next week, next Thursday. Uh, we're doing the show live on Thursdays now. At uh, Well, today was a little bit late, but we're going to try and stick to 5 p.m. So 5 Pacific on Thursdays, peeps. So we'll see you next week. Have a great week.